manga and video game more, and the film is a totally separate continuity from either of those. But uh, at the same time, it logically makes sense for what I'm talking about to exist in the film universe or film continuity and timeline as well. So, without too much more ado, I'm just going to give you the big warning here. Big warning is massive spoilers for Volume 9 of the manga and later on in the video game, Gun of Martian Memory, which is the adaptation in video game form of the manga. And it diverges a little bit, but I can talk about that in a later presentation. So, you have been warned. And I'll say it again, you've been warned. There's spoilers here. All right, so, yeah, it's kind of a little stupid shooting, firing assault rifles at such a big ring, but I guess they try to do what they can. <laughs> but the defense rings are both automated and manually in the film, that basically they are set up to stop whatever's climbing up the tube. They were used in the war according to the film war, which is, again, separate timeline. But the big thing here is here is why would they bother climbing up the tube? Why not just crash Kamikaze into Zalem? Why not just go and just totally just fire missiles or bombs at it? I don't know. Well, we are going to find out, at least from the manga continuity and by extension the video game continuity that was adapted from the manga, why this doesn't exactly work. Why doesn't it work? It's held by a column, right? Well, it's a lot more than that. And here is from the manga itself, and you can see something. So this is later on the manga, there's a new rebellion against Barjack, and they're targeting the support column with a massive train cannon. Based on the train cannons used in World War One, or the massive guns used in Sevaspool. You know, you decide which one of these those kinds of guns inspired this one. Now this is not Alita, it's a clone of her known as AR-10 or G-10, depending on which translation you're talking about. Um, they made a bunch of clones of her and those clones are androids, but they uh, are designed to go around and kill off opposition. But now obviously Kriomi thinks it's a it's the original one that she, the leader that she always knew, but it isn't. It's just a uh, clone. And she eventually just realizes that this is the original one I saw. And the number 10 on her head tells you that. She's an android from the android replicates. So she falls off, they fire the gun. We're going to see what happens when that shell hits Solom. Target, bam, right there. Yup, it didn't do it. It stopped in midair. It blew up in midair. Why is that? Well, there's a defensive energy field around Zalem, so it's not totally unprotected. Would it stop people from climbing up? Um, the answer is no. This defensive energy field relies on the speed at which something is approaching the field. If it's hitting really fast, then there, there is a greater repelling force. If it moves very slowly towards this energy field, the repulsive force decreases. So if you were just trying to walk through it, it wouldn't quite stop you. You could go through it. So basically, with the high speed factoring into the repulsive force and to this field stopping them, the URM, if assuming this exists in the film, the URM would literally be held off from trying to crash or fly into it really fast. They'd be held off from trying to just bombard Zalem. And there's additional presumable orbital defenses going on above Zalem as well. In space, there's more around the Earth, so. Yes, they did this dangerous thing of trying to climb up there. It's 
see how this works. There's been a number of times it's been shown in film how a field, a defensive field that works on kinetic energy for stopping attacks works. And we'll see these science fiction examples from various film franchises that work on the same principle. Same principle of propelling based on speed of impact. So the first and oldest example I've known of this concept is called the Holton Shield for Frank Herbert's Dune franchise. The shield is mostly invisible with some ripples that gets created in the air, but it depends on the speed at which something encounters or approaches the shield. As this energy field surrounds this person you can see in the diagram and it does a wonderful job of stopping bullets. And as you can see, this person in the picture is armed with a sword or a rapier because swords or the speed of someone striking out with a knife or a sword is much slower than a bullet impacting a shield in Dune. So people using these Holtzman shields pretty much force you to resort to using melee weapons because you're not generally not going to strike some at supersonic speed with those. One problem with the so-called Holtzman shield in Dune is that if you hit it with a laser, it creates a nuclear fusion chain reaction in the air. So you basically create a, a miniature nuclear bomb type explosion <laughs> shooting a shield with a laser. Very dangerous. Also, does not mention the presentation. The shield makes a continuous noise as it's operating so that in Dune, there is this hazard that you could uh, <laughs> attract the sandworms that you do not see. They feel vibration, hear sound, so it will come for you based on your shield being on. So yeah, being eaten by giant worms that burrow under sand, that's a little dangerous as well. But uh, they, they did wall off cities such as Arakeen, the capital of Arrakis or Dune, as it's called in the novels. And they had to get, fight, figure out ways to get around the shield because they, this shield was created on, on a massive city wall scale. So, you know, just dropping bombs in the city from above wouldn't quite work. You had to break the wall to break the projection of this energy field. It was an amazing part of the novel and hopefully the later Dune films and to an extent the other Dune films showed this where they had to break a hole in the wall to get inside the city. But here is from the actual film, the 2021 adaptation of Dune, part one of two. He's the new uh, person training Paul Atreides in the film.
Yeah, there's there's uh, Frank Herbert's Dune and Pulse There's another franchise, an example, you know, visually shown, and this is Cowboy Bebop. The case is that of Mad Pirot, who's a So yeah, and the first one didn't Doctor we talk about Cowboy Bebop, there's another sci-fi one that at least shows it a little bit. It mentions it even more called Star Wars. Deflector Shield Technology. Happens in a variety of ways. They very but the uh, they show it on screen visually how a deflector shield works with episode one Phantom Menace and is mentioned a lot during episode five Empire Strikes Back years before that way before the prequels happened. But they have this deflector shield covering a planet. But first, you know, it's funny that this deflector shield. You know, obviously shows some inspiration from Dune here, but here it's mentioned. So in essence, what happened was the Empire, you know, explained that the real reason why they just land on the Rebel base at that point in Empire Strikes Back is specifically because um, they're going to stop us from barring them from above, so we just have to land there and do it ourselves. Furthermore, in uh, Episode 1, Phantom Menace, you get to see a little visual when the Gungans create this weird kind of bubble shield. Same principle as Dune, in the sense that, well, except for the laser part, assuming that they shoot lasers. As you can see, look, it's stopping shots from the tank. So, yeah, if you want to know why they didn't just bombard them from above, this would be why. So, with the high-speed artillery rounds not working, they have to go in. Manually, <laughs> I might add. Some of this dialogue just don't really find that. some of these films much. <laughs> but as you can see, they can walk right through it, even though their shots, the high speed projectiles, do not. So, in conclusion there is the Zalm Shield, however you explain it, and the Zalm Shield works on. Defensive energy shield, similar to what we saw in Dune or Star Wars or Cowboy Bebop, where you know, high speed projectiles are going to be stopped. But slower speed motion will be repelled or stopped far less, or less likely when you get slower. So they, instead of trying to bombard the thing, crash ships into it, they just decide to climb up. And it's possible that this is a thing in the film frame film timeline, even though it's a separate timeline. 
it could be an explanation as to why they were climbing up in Alina's flash track. Hello everyone, this is Chaos Nova and I want to offer my thanks and appreciation as well as offer some recommendations for channels and uh, various uh, videos for this presentation that inspired me and I recommend you also take a look at at this time. Um, each Friday and Saturday there is usually an Elite Army podcast. Uh, the Friday ones are at Creek Indian Elite Army at six with some exceptions um, he'll usually make note of that if it's not as scheduled normally or we'll replay an old one and the second elite army podcast happens on saturday at 5 p.m and this is an eastern standard time or new york city time so adjust accordingly if you're outside of that time zone the other thing I'm going to recommend is uh, I just want to say thank you to some people who helped inspire making this project. Um, this includes Giant Nice Day. Uh, he has some great lore on Gunham. And I want to say thank you for that inspiration. And also, I recommend uh, BS is Real, um, encouraging me to keep making uh, moves and a wonderful guest of mine. And I also want to say thank you to Diesel Man Plays as well um, for encouraging me to make more of these fan videos. In the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful evening and signing off.